What's up guys and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel where I aim to help you learn Linux and get your foot in the tech world. And today I'm doing something a little bit different and that's a story time about the first time I got fired. Yep, you heard that right. But you know what? It's all part of the journey and I'm here to share some lessons I've learned along the way. So let's get to it. So let me set the scene. This was back in 2008. I had just moved to Las Vegas, Nevada in late 2007, and I had worked one job so far as a systems administrator. Now we all know Las Vegas is known as an entertainment capital of the world, and it's a city buzzing with over like a hundred live production events every night. And it's making me think about one of the events I went to not that long ago, which was Cedric the Entertainer and Tony Braxton. Me and the wife went to one of the events and there's always something going on here. And speaking of live productions, in the middle of this city was this small startup called Live Production Institute. And I called it LPI for short, but LPI had this grand vision to be a go-to place for like training skilled professionals in live production. And when I first got hired, this place was impressive. It was a massive campus with like sound stages, labs, classrooms, and even a concert hall for students to learn production skills. And their goal was to provide hands-on training and certifications in like lighting, audio, video, and stage technology. And so I really got into this because that's the type of school I went to. I went to Remington College. It was a pretty good school, but one thing that was very valuable was the hands-on training. Now the financial part of it, that's a whole nother story. I've talked about Remington College on my channel before. If that's the only choice you have, then maybe, but a lot of those for-profit organizations are not that great to begin with when it comes to the financial side, because they're really trying to hit your pockets. But this school was all about practical understanding, and I was like excited to be a part of it. I mean, imagine being part of a place that's shaping the future of live entertainment. Also, while in the middle of the entertainment capital of the world, I got hired on as a systems administrator. And like I said, it was my second tech job. And I left another system admin role for this one because the money was actually a lot better. And I was ready to bring my A game. You know what I'm saying? I was super excited to make a difference. And the first year, I'm telling you, it was amazing. The school hadn't even opened yet. They were trying to get everything set up and I was responsible for everything computer related. And so I was doing things like redesigning the network. I, I created a whole nother domain on the network. I also went around fixing a whole bunch of computers, just getting them ready in all these different offices, fixing patch panels, all that stuff. I mean, I'm telling you, it was like a techie dream playground. I was having so much fun at work, bro. It was the funnest time within my career because majority of the organizations that you go into, they already have everything set up. You don't get to see things being set up from the ground up. Someone has already done it majority of the time and you're just coming in to maintain it or improve upon what's already there. I was given the opportunity to revamp their entire network infrastructure, patch paneling, tracing cables, replacing those cables or fixing the ends on the cables. I got so much hands-on experience on this job as well that really improved my skills. Like for instance, one thing that we did was the owner of the company leased some new Dell Blade servers. I migrated everything to those Dell Blade servers to run the network. Before, all they had was like these desktop computers that were like barely hanging on that was running the network. And so once I got all that set up, I migrated everything over, ensuring everything was running smoothly. But I'm telling you, again, I was living a dream, doing what I love and making sure that the backbone of this project was solid. Now, of course, the work was challenging, but that's what made it rewarding, in my opinion. Now, let me give you a little bit more backstory. So I was hired directly by the owner who was super impressed by my background. Also, the owner hired a director of IT, which I worked with him for a while. And the reason I say worked with him, because he was looked at as my direct supervisor, but he just kind of let me handle everything on my own. I actually worked in the server room and I was setting up everything, doing it all on my own. And if I had any questions, I mean, he couldn't really help, but I would go in and just figure it out and do it on my own. And I think it's because he was a bit behind on the new technology that I was introducing. 
and I'm not even sure of all of his background, but he knew some stuff. But a lot of the stuff I was bringing to the table, he was basically just letting me, we need this and I don't know how to do it, but can you set it up? And I will go back there and set it up. So, but anyway, I was just focusing on doing my job. I barely talked to the guy, but one thing about it, I felt great that the owner trusted me to implement a lot of this stuff because it was gonna push the organization forward. And all of my interactions with the owner were positive. He really loved what I was doing to help build out the network for the organization and setting everything up for them. But then a rough patch came along after a year or so, because I didn't know this at the time, but they were having some financial difficulties that they were not letting everyone know about. Paychecks slowed down and it got to the point where we were almost a month behind sometimes over a month behind on paychecks. And so it was getting to the point in my opinion, where the excitement of working there, it started fading. As soon as those financial issues started creeping up, it was to the point where I was getting frustrated. It's one thing working on exciting projects, but when you're not getting paid, the reality hits in hard. Also, I wasn't alone. It was pretty much everybody, even the director of IT, he wasn't getting paid. It, as far as I know, and me and my colleagues and the people that worked closest to me were constantly wondering when we was going to see another paycheck. And so it was tough watching the morale drop. Like, for instance, it wasn't easy juggling my passion for the work and the need to keep my personal finances afloat. And so to make ends meet, I picked up a second job. I just started putting my resume out there, started shopping it around, and I end up getting hired by a small company. And actually I was the only employee. It's weird. Like it was the owner and then I was one employee and he was working on other contracts, but I worked on one of his main contracts that was with a doctor's office. And basically all I did was manage software used during patient visits and surgeries. The doctor was somewhat of a stickler. He wanted his tools to work perfectly when he needed them to. So sometimes he would pay for us to be there. So I was there a lot of times, especially when he had a whole bunch of appointments, but it wasn't a glamorous job and it didn't pay all that well, but I was determined not to let this financial setback derail me. And so with this second job, I kind of had to find a balance. I was working early mornings at the doctor's office because that's when majority of the patients would come in. And then I would head over to LPI to continue what I started on there. And then also I'm one of the people that kind of take work home with me. Like if it's something I can't figure out during the day, a lot of times I still be thinking about it later on or it'll pop up in my head later on. Like, oh, did you try this? You know what I'm saying? And so I would want to try that stuff. And then also they allow to remote in. So I was able to remote in and test out either theory or something I was trying to figure out during the day because I only work for a certain amount of time in the evening. And so I'm really doing a whole lot more because I really like the job. I like the place. I wanted it to be successful. But I kept reminding myself that it was just temporary and I knew I was capable of more. And this was just like a stepping stone to get where I needed to be. But then things got worse. Paychecks started bouncing, leading to bank fees, overdrafts. Man, I'm telling you, it was crazy. Like I cashed a check thinking I could finally catch up on my bills only to find out it wasn't good. And of course, this added another layer of stress. And honestly, it was disheartening. Like I didn't understand what was going on. And it's almost like we were being left in the dark. Oh, you're gonna get paid or you're gonna get paid. And, and just when it does happen, boom, the bank tells you your paycheck didn't clear. And a lot of times I would put my paycheck in the bank and they'll give you an advance, so to speak. Like, if, let's say my check was like 1200. They, they give me the advance of 800 and hold the rest of it or whatever. So I started paying bills, paying bills, paying bills. And then boom, three days later, I got a negative balance on my card. And I'm like, what the hell, man? It got to the point where I even like lost one of my cars, man. This was the first and only repossession I had. But I basically called a finance company and said, hey, man, I cannot keep up with this note. I'm going through a rough patch right now. Can y'all come get this car? And they came and picked it up. They called it a voluntary re repossession. Most of the time, they had to come looking for the people. The finance company had to send out tow trucks looking for you, looking for you at work and all that stuff. No, I told them straight up. I was like, hey, I'm two months behind. I don't think I'm going to catch it. Come get it. You know what I'm saying? And it was kind of like a, just a, a, a car that I had to finance in order to keep things going. Cause the vehicle I brought from Louisiana was kind of old, you know what I'm saying? And I just needed something a little bit better and more reliable so I can make it to work on. But I'm telling you, man, I felt, I felt like a 
piece of crap, man, when that happened. I was like, man, this, this sucks. Like, I ain't never lost nothing like that. I always pay my bills on time. Never had any issues like this. And I look at it like it's my fault. I should have just went on and let this job go as soon as the financial issues started happening. But like I said, I believed in what they were doing and I wanted to be a part of it. Now, nah, let me go into the day I got fired. I'm telling you, it was like crazy. It was like a roller coaster of emotions. I was calling the director of our every single day just to check and see if we were getting paid. When I did, I would call him after I was leaving the other job to come to LPI. And so one day he was like, yeah, we, we getting paid today. You know what I'm saying? This sounded like he was being honest. I didn't know he was trying to play me or whatever. I got there, you know what I'm saying? And I was finished at work. I went into the server room where I, my desk was at, set my stuff down or whatever. And then walked over to the director and he was in his office. He was waiting on me. And he was like, hey man, come here, man, right fast. And I, was, I was still thinking, hey, you finna give me my paycheck. I'm super excited. I'm ready to pay some bills. But as soon as I sat down, I started hearing the words, sorry, but we're going to have to. So I already knew what he was finna say. We're gonna have to let you go. And so I got like super upset, man. I was like, all the time I didn't put into this stuff and y'all finna let me go like this? Did you talk to the owner of the company? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Like, are you guys laying me off because you can't afford me anymore? And he's like, you're getting fired because of that phone call. He tried to turn the phone call around as if I was giving him a ultimatum. And all I did was ask if we were getting paid. I wasn't the only one there being frustrated by it and just asking. Now I understand we all got our issues and we're all trying to pay our bills and we, we're supposedly all not getting paid, which I don't know, he might've been getting paid. We might not have been getting paid. But anyway, he basically made it seem that I was giving him like an ultimatum, like, I'm not coming in unless you guys pay me, which that's not what I was saying on the phone at all. I wish I had recorded it because that's not what I said. I was just trying to make sure I could get paid. And he wasn't hearing that shit. It was like, I could tell he had like his mind made up. And honestly, I think he had it out for me for a while now. And it was just building up or something. Maybe he just didn't, he wanted to get rid of me. I wasn't the only one complaining, but maybe I was like one of the people being more, more vocal about it because I'm sure anyone would be, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you got a young child at home. I think I had, a, my son was two years old at the time. My wife was working. We were sharing one car at one point, you know what I'm saying? Cause I had to give up one, but you would think he would understand, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't trying to be like a a-hole or something, but he wasn't exactly supportive at all. And I believe he planned this, you know what I'm saying? Because maybe I was pushing for answers or solutions to the not getting paid problem. I don't know, but I was dedicated to my work, but I just needed to know when I'd be able to take care of everything. But anyway, I kept explaining my side, but like I said, he wasn't interested in it. And I can kind of tell by his body language and like his demissive tone that this was the outcome that he wanted. And come to find out, I was right about that. Like a couple days later, I was constantly looking for a job throughout the day, but I decided to get the owner a call because I had his phone number stored in my phone. And he told me the director said I quit. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe that dude did this. Like he straight up lied on me. So after I got out the phone with the owner, he offered me my job. He wanted me to come back or whatever. Cause he knew what I was doing there. I was the only one really building up the whole network and everything. But I told him, nah, I'm not interested, bro. Like I can't come back there because basically you're telling me he lied to you. And that should be some grounds for him to get in trouble as well. I was just curious on the paycheck, if I was getting paid, that's all I was asking about. And I didn't understand anything about going to see a lawyer and all this stuff. I, I just wanted to be over and just find somewhere else. So let me get to the crazy part of this. So like I would say about uh, two years later, I would always just check in on the organization, just see what's going on. Cause I was interested to see how far along the school has gotten. Well, the whole school dissolved. Everybody got fired. The owner faced some serious legal trouble. And turns out he was caught up in a fraud scheme with like some federal credit union. And that was pretty much the end of LPI. It's crazy. Like everyone, including the director of IT was let go. It was wild how things unfolded. I didn't expect that, but I had moved on. And it's a shame because the idea behind LPI was solid. It was supposed to be like a beacon of education and opportunity in the live production industry, but it almost seemed like mismanagement and greed overshadowed the mission. And that eventually led to his downfall. Now this experience taught me a lot about the importance of integrity and transparency in leadership. Like without those values, 
even the most promising ventures can crumble. So what did I learn from all of this? Well, first off, every job has its ups and downs. It's essential to take the good experiences and lessons and use them to build your career. Cause trust me, if I didn't go through all of that and learn what I learned at that organization, I don't know where I would be. I don't know if I would have gotten better positions in the future if it wasn't for all this experience I gathered from this position. So you should focus in on the positives and don't let the bad stuff hold you back. Keep pushing forward, always grow and all that stuff. And I hope my story gives you a little insight into the tech world and remind you that if you're in a tough spot right now, know that things can and will get better. Just learn from every situation and use it to fuel your growth. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in to Keep It Techie. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more like tech stories and tutorials and all the stuff I do on my channel. I'm here to support you on your tech journey. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techie. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in because yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.